Hola, este jueves pasado, 27 de abril de este año 2023, tuve la oportunidad de tener una charla muy interesante con una artista y curadora de una galería de arte. Y la charla se centró tanto en el proceso de la creación como la enorme necesidad de exponer las obras y la constante lucha de los artistas por abrirse espacios. Fuera de esa plática, horas más tarde, vino a mi mente un video de una clase del profesor de psicología canadiense Jordan Peterson. Pero he visto suficientes de sus videos para poder decir que varios de sus puntos son válidos. Precisamente, en el clip que les compartiré en este momento, creo que presenta un punto muy válido sobre la condición humana y la motivación del individuo. Así que este es el video de una de sus clases. I tell you the zebra story. Hmm? You any of you know that story? Okay, I'll, t I'll tell you this zebra story. Tell, stop me if I've told it to you before. This tells you everything you need to know about human beings. So it's, wor it's, worth, it's worth knowing. Okay, so zebras have stripes. And people say, well, that's for camouflage. And then you think about that for two seconds. And you think, that's a really stupid theory. Because lions are camouflaged. And they're like golden, like the grass. And zebras are black and white. So you can see a zebra five miles away. It's like, there's a zebra, it's black and white. So the whole camouflage thing, that's just not working out so well as a hypothesis. Okay, so bio biologists go and they decide to take a look at some zebras. And so they're looking at a zebra at, on the herd because there's no zebra, right? Just like there's no fish. There are schools of fish and there are herds of zebras. There isn't a fish. This is why I think the cod aren't coming back. There are no cod. There are massive hundred mile long schools of cod, 10 stories deep, 20 million years old. You wipe out the school, you don't just get to throw a cod in the water and say, well, you know, off you go. It's like, well, where's my city? It's like launching you in the middle of a field. It's like, well, go out there and reproduce. It's like, no, that's not going to happen, you know? So without the school, the, there's no cod, and you can't just introduce a whole school of cod because you don't have a whole school of cod. So, you know, maybe the cod are never coming back. And zebras are the same thing. They're, there's not a zebra. There's zebras. And so you're looking at the zebras, trying to study a zebra, and you look at the zebra, and you make some notes, and you look up, and you think, oh, Christ, which zebra was I looking at? And the answer to that is you don't know because the, the camouflage is against the herd and the black and white stripes. There's a variety of reasons for the stripes. The flies also seem not to like the stripes, but you know, usually people, things evolve for multiple reasons. But anyways, it's very difficult to parse out a zebra against the herd. You look down, you look up, it's like, uh-oh, all those damn zebras look the same. Yes, the camouflage is effective, but it's against the herd. All right, so then you think, well, we better identify a zebra so we can see what he's up to. So then you take your Jeep, and a can of red paint and a stick with a rag on the end of it. And you drive up to the zebras and you paint their haunch red a little bit. Put a nice red dot on their haunch or maybe clip their ear with a cattle clip. And then you, you, know, you stand back and you think, hey, I'm pretty smart. Now I'm going to watch that zebra. So what do you think happens to the zebra? The lions kill it. Right, right, right. Because lions, they're smart, right? Hunter, hunting animals are smart. But they have to identify a zebra before they can organize their hunt. They can't just hunt the whole herd. They have to pick out a zebra. And so maybe it's like a zebra that's got a sore hip or something. And so you think, well, nature's kind. It just takes the weak. It's no, no. Zebra or lions like really healthy, delicious zebras. But they look like all the other healthy, delicious zebras. So they can't get a bead on them. But if they're small and just born or if they're limping or there's something that identifies them, then the lions can pick them out. And then they do pick them out. And so the rule for human beings is keep your damn stripes on so the lions don't get you. And I'm telling you, man, if you want to remember one thing from my class about human motivation, that's a good thing to learn. People camouflage themselves against the herd, and they like to be in the middle of the herd, which is what fish do, by the way. If you have a big school of fish, the smart, healthy, large fish are in the middle of the school. Because you know what you call fish on the outside of the school? Bait. Right. So... That's what people are doing. They're trying to move into the middle of the herd all the time. And the herd moves around, or the school moves around, and people are going, well, I'm in the middle. I'm staying in the middle here. So I've got this protective ring of 
people around me so the predators don't pick me out and do me in. So, okay, so that's, that's part of the reason why I said, well, you can't sell something to someone for success because, you, you know, you're thinking, well, people are aiming at success. Don't, don't be thinking that. It's not by any means necessarily true. Trait neuroticism is a potential, mo a, po a powerful motivator. And trait neuroticism is, let's not be too threatened or hurt, right? That's the negative emotion system. And the negative emotion system is a killer source of motivation. You know, you also see that there are scales of well-being that have been designed, mostly by social psychologists, which means they're very bad scales most of the time, because their psychometric capacity is, is, is absurdly low, generally speaking. So what you find with scales of well-being, sometimes they're talked about as scales of happiness even, is that people aren't after happiness, they're after not hurting. It's not, so they don't want to be extroverted and enthusiastic, right, and, and bubbly and, and full of smiles and laughter. That isn't what they mean by, I want to be happy. What they mean is, I don't want to be anxious or in pain. And so well-being scales tend to be something like neuroticism, sorry, emotional stability plus extroversion. But the big loading is on emotional stability, the reverse of neuroticism. You want to avoid suffering. You don't want to be happy. You want to avoid suffering. And one way to avoid suffering is not to let the lions gnaw on you. And one way of doing that is to stay in the middle of the damn herd. And so, and, and I, like, I'm not being a smart aleck about this. I understand why people do that. There's real danger to being visible. There's real danger in being visible. Now, you might be successful if you're visible, but you also might be dead. Bueno, ese es el clip. Y estoy de acuerdo con lo dicho por el profesor. Una motivación subconsciente del individuo es permanecer dentro del grupo para estar protegido. Pero, por otra parte, y esta es una reflexión dirigida para todos mis amigos artistas que he conocido a través de los años. Una enorme motivación para ustedes, luego de la creación de sus obras, tiene que ser salir al ojo público, presentar sus obras y ver qué pasa, porque solo exponiéndose, incluso exponiéndose a críticas, podrán crecer por medio de un análisis de qué es lo que funciona y qué no funciona, y trabajar en ello. Y solo con la exposición tendrán, y tendremos, una posibilidad de alcanzar el éxito. Por lo tanto, la idea principal de este video corto es echarse al agua y ver qué sucede. Así de simple. Bueno, y el próximo video, dedicado a la batalla de Colenso de 1899, ya está bastante adelantado. Desde ya, les comparto que las conclusiones del mismo son interesantes y espero que esté listo para los próximos días de este inicio del mes de mayo del 2023. Atentamente y saludos cordiales desde Guatemala de Víctor Aguilar Chang.